This week on Maker Update, an artificially intelligent word camera, the launch of the Pi Compute Module 3 and why it's okay not to care, a goofy walking Arduino bot, a slot together octopus lamp, a $20 color matching laptop light, shop tips, battery tips, and where in the world is this week's Maker Faire? It's Wednesday, January 18th. I'm Donald Bell and welcome to another Maker Update. It's been a great week for me. I got a lot of new subscribers from a video I posted last week on getting started with Raspberry Pi. So if you're new here to the channel, welcome to the channel. If you're new to this show, this is my weekly show where I round up interesting projects and news that will be hopefully interesting to you if you're into cool, geeky, artsy, makery stuff. Uh, and there's a lot of that stuff this week, so let's get right to it, starting with the project of the week. This might be the coolest Raspberry Pi project I've seen in a while. It's a camera designed by Charles Channon that takes a picture, uploads it to Microsoft's free artificial intelligence service, and then it gets downloaded back to an LCD screen as a text-based description of the picture. In the video, you can see him take a photo of a Christmas tree, upload it, and then scrolling text comes back down and describes it as a vase of flowers next to a bookcase. So it's not exactly perfect, but the bookcase part is right. And when you think about what's going on here, it's sort of mind blowing. This is a peek at how artificially intelligent robots might see our world. And as the algorithm self correct and get smarter, tools like this will only get more accurate. This is a really fascinating project to me in terms of its ties into AI and machine learning, things that we don't see a lot of yet in the maker universe, but I think we're going to see more of. It's also really interesting to me from like an artistic point of view as like a detached way of thinking about photography. Like imagine how boring your Instagram feed would be if you replaced all of the photos with text descriptions of the photos. Just be like plate of food, plate of food, human face, sunset. And if you know my taste in projects, you also appreciate that what I really love about this is how affordable and realistically achievable it is. The hardware can be had for under $100. It's just a Pi 3, a Pi camera module, a two-line LCD from Adafruit, and a generic USB battery pack. The software is easy to set up, and there's a thorough, approachable write-up on Hackster.io. And now for news. On Monday, the Raspberry Pi Foundation announced two new models of their compute module, the CM3 and CM3 Lite. Both are now available for $30 and $25 respectively, and the original compute module is also still available at a lower price of $25. Now, honestly, most of us really shouldn't even care about this news because the, the module is one of the Pi's most misunderstood products. It's not really made for hobbyists like us. It's made for companies to integrate into large product runs. There's no USB port, there's no HDMI out, there's no wireless. What's cool about it is that it's designed to be easily slotted into a very standard and inexpensive memory card slot that product designers can just bake into their designs. For example, NEC made a line of displays that can be driven just by slotting in this module in the back. That's cool, but again, it's more of a manufacturing advantage. If you're a maker and you want a small, inexpensive Pi, you go with the $5 Pi Zero right? Then again, the new module is better spec than the Pi Zero. So theoretically, if you need a project that was ultra compact, but also need to be fast, you could go with the module and like a breakout board that you could slot it into. The bottom line is, it's good to have options. You now have more options. And now for more projects. Last week, I got the new issue of Make Magazine. It's their robots issue. And I have a little byline in here if you look carefully. Uh, the cover robot is this robot called Chippy, and it's designed by Renee L. Glinsky. And honestly, it didn't really catch my attention until I saw the video for it. Check out the way this thing walks. It is so goofy, but I love it. The walking effect is created by four servos, driven by an Arduino, and controlled by a generic IR game controller. Most of the body is made from simple 3D printed parts. You can get the whole thing as a kit for around $150 or piece it out yourself and save a little money. There's a great write-up on makezine.com where you can find the full project documentation and the video. As robot projects go, it looks relatively easy to accomplish, especially if you're already comfortable with Arduino. Also on Makezine, check out Caleb Kraft's Slot Together Octopus Lamp. Caleb took on this project as a way to familiarize himself with both his laser cutter and Autodesk Free Fusion 360 modeling software. But what's really great is that if you don't have access to a laser cutter or any motivation to cozy up to Fusion, 
Caleb lays out a method for recreating the design just by printing it out on paper, applying it to wood, and then cutting out the shapes with the jigsaw or whatever you have handy. If you are curious to learn a little about Fusion 360 though, Caleb has some great videos and tips that step you through his design process. So even if you never make the project, it's a great beginner friendly peek into how a project like this gets made. Finally, for a cool, cheap, no solder electronics project, check out the new Circuit Playground version of the Adalite project by Phil B at Adafruit. All you need is a $20 Circuit Playground board and a USB cable, and you can quickly give an Ambilight style background lighting effect for a small computer monitor or a laptop screen. The project makes use of the built-in ring of color changing LEDs on the Circuit Playground board, and what's more fascinating is that on the software side, Phil B is using a processing sketch to constantly monitor the edges of your video output for color values that it can send over to the LEDs. It's a fun, low stakes project and a great excuse to get familiar with processing, which is more or less based on the same root language as Arduino, making it easy to integrate, but opening up a lot more possibilities for interactive computer projects. You can find a link for this project and all of the projects from this episode in the video description here or in the show notes over on makerprojectlab.com. I have a few other quick tips to share with you this week. The first is this 3D file on Thingiverse for a Spring Contacts AA battery holder designed by Frank Fleury. Using the customizer feature on Thingiverse, you can adapt this design for as many batteries as you need, adding each battery's 1.5 volts until you get your desired voltage. He also includes a link for buying spring and plate sets that will work with this design, priced at around $2.26 for 10 sets with free shipping. I also saw this cool 9 volt battery adapter from Mahesh Venkitachalam that snaps right on and includes an onboard power regulator with pins for both 5 volts and 3.3 volts. The board is available on Crowd Supply for $15 plus $5 shipping, which isn't cheap, but it could be a useful tool for prototyping circuits on the go or in a classroom setting where it might be impossible to wire up power supplies for the whole class. Also, my friend Gareth Branwin has a great roundup of Make's most popular workshop tips of 2016 over on makezine.com. There are tips here from Jimmy DeResta and John Park and a bunch of others. You're bound to find something useful that will stick with you. And this week, I heard about the Kickstarter Make 100 campaign. This is an initiative from Kickstarter encouraging makers like you to launch limited edition runs of 100 things capped out at 100 backers. So it could be 100 zines or 100 3D printed doodads or 100 handmade coasters. It's a cool idea, I think, and a nice reminder that kickstarted things don't have to be a freaking Shark Tank invention. Maker fairs are back this weekend. There's only one and it's in Bangkok, Thailand, but it's nice to see the momentum starting back up. It's also a nice time to remember that Maker Fair Bay Area, the biggest and baddest of them all, is set for the weekend of May 19th through the 21st. So if you're planning on coming out to it, maybe jump on booking your travel now. And that is it for this week's Maker Update. I hope you liked it. I encourage you to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And if you really like the show and if the show is useful to you, the best thing you can do for me is to share it online someplace where your maker friends are gonna see it and help me grow my subscribers just a little bit more, all right? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.